One thing you might notice is it may be 90 degrees outside, but it's 120 inside your metal building because of that heat radiating to the inside from that sun beating on the outside of your metal building all day. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Patriot DIY channel. Today we're going to be insulating our metal building. Now there are a lot of different types of insulation and ways to go about doing this. Uh, a lot of times in a metal building it can be a little bit more challenging since you don't have the wood framing to attach to. But we're going to talk about what we've decided to use. A couple of the biggest issues you have to combat with a metal building like this is one, the radiant heat from the sun. So if you've ever been in a warehouse or a metal building like this in the summertime, one thing you might notice is it may be 90 degrees outside, but it's 120 inside your metal building because of that heat radiating to the inside from that sun beating on the outside of your metal building all day. Now here where we live, there can be crazy temperature swings and metal buildings are notorious for condensating on the inside. So the difference in temperature from outside to inside can cause that condensation on your roof and on your walls. And you're really gonna end up having a lot of moisture issues inside. You even have the condensation from the roof raining down on you and your tools and everything else. So we really gotta make sure we do something to prevent that. Now, if you like these kind of videos, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell, and please give us a thumbs up. That really helps us out. What we're gonna be using is this double bubble foil insulation. Now this insulation is made up of two layers of bubble on the inside, sandwiched between either two layers of the foil, or you can get foil on one side and white on the other side so that you can have a nice clean white look on the inside of your shop. Now this is gonna do a couple things for you. you know, something like this is gonna block 97% of that radiant heat, helping keep your inside temperature from heating up on those hot days. This type of insulation also does a great job of preventing that condensation from getting into your building. Now, a lot of times when we talk about insulation, we talk about R value. So something like this by itself is not gonna have a huge R value like fiberglass or foam insulation or something like this. This is designed more to prevent that radiant heat and stuff like that. If installed correctly, depending on uh, what method you choose to use, you can get an R value of three to seven with this insulation as long as you install it correctly. You may see a lot of people just sticking this straight onto that siding of the building. That is not the right way to install this. You're really not gonna get the benefits out of this if you put it right up against your siding. What you need is an air gap between your siding and this double bubble foil insulation. Now, obviously we are installing this in an existing building, so that is gonna come with its own challenges. Typically the way this would be installed if it was installed at the time the building was built is they would erect the framing of the building and then they would wrap the entire thing in this double bubble insulation. And then they would add furring strips on the outside of the studs on top of the insulation, creating that air gap and then mounting the siding to those furring strips. Now, obviously we can't do it the way they would have done it if it had been installed at the time the building was built. But what we're gonna do is we're basically using the same method. We're just gonna do it on the inside between the studs. So we have our furring strips here. These are one by twos. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a heavy duty construction adhesive to fix these furring strips into our wall. Then we're gonna double side tape our insulation to those furring strips. So we still get full coverage between the studs and we're also allowing that air gap that this insulation needs to do its best job. All right guys, now we're gonna go ahead and walk you through the process starting off with these sections of wall and then we'll move our way up to the ceiling and show you how we're gonna do that. Now let's get started. Now the adhesive we're gonna be using to attach our furring strips is this Liquid Nails Heavy Duty Construction Adhesive. And remember guys, I am gonna to link to all these things in the description below so you can get them for yourself. All right guys, it is a new day and we are back to install some of this insulation. We've already got our one by twos mounted up on the wall and we've started installing some of our double-sided tape on these cross beams on the ceiling. So now we're actually gonna get some of this insulation up on the wall. 
A couple things you are gonna need is a good razor knife. Um, and you can do this with ladders, but let me tell you, it is a lot easier and a lot safer if you can get some scaffolding. That's, that's gonna help you get up there to those heights without having to come up and down a whole bunch. Another thing we found that makes the process a lot easier is if you can get some of these clamps to help hold the insulation in place while you're getting everything positioned and taping it down. Now let's climb up here and get started. Now the ceiling already has some cross beams going across it so we don't have to use any one by twos to get that air gap. So we can just put our double sided tape right onto those cross beams and we've already got some of that tape installed. see what I'm doing here to keep it nice and clean is I'm just cutting on either side of that post and then I'm tucking the excess in over top of that beam and that's going to give you a nice clean flat look. All right, guys, we are officially done with the ceiling. I think that turned out really nice. Got the hang of it pretty quick. Everything looks nice and flat and clean. All right, guys, we are officially finished with the insulation in this metal building. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, and I do want to show you guys a couple other things that I ended up doing that really helped out. So let's take a quick look around. All right, guys, as you can see, we are completely finished with the walls, the ceiling. There's our back wall there. Now this wall that's not done, that's an interior wall that's just between these two rooms here. So there's no reason to insulate that unless you just have the extra material. And you can see we did our bathroom in here as well. Now this is just a little side room we have off the shop and you can tell I didn't spend quite as much time getting everything perfect on the ceiling and the walls of this one as long as it's up there because these walls are actually gonna get faced with reclaimed barn wood and the same thing with this uh, wall going between the two rooms. So uh, that's another project we are gonna be doing on the channel, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Here's our front wall. 
Now that front wall, just because of the windows and the door did require uh, to cut uh, some smaller pieces, but it actually went up a lot faster than trying to fight with a big long piece. I did want to show you a couple things that we did end up doing just to help hold everything up even better. We did put some self-tapping screws here in the very peak of the ceiling where those two pieces of insulation meet. There can be a lot of stress and weight bearing down on that trying to hold everything up. So I went ahead and put in some uh, self-tapping screws that just help with that. And then going down along the walls, I did go ahead and put in some staples every four feet or so going down that wall. And that's just gonna help hold it against those wood spacers and prevent it from uh, separating from the wall over time if that double side tape starts to give way. And you can tell I also went ahead and uh, put up some flags. This is the Patriot DIY channel after all. So I went ahead and got that knocked out while I had the scaffolding. But yeah, I think it turned out really good. All right guys, that's it for this video. I hope this video helped you out if you're insulating a metal building. If you have any questions or anything, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done it yet, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. That really helps us out. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.